SDG 3 is about a healthy life and well-being at all ages. The world has made big progress in recent decades to improve the health of millions of people, but there's still a lot left to do, not least to tackle the COVID-19 pandemic. Let's take a closer look at how the UN is leading the world's joint effort to respond. The World Health Organization, WHO, and its 150 country offices work closely with governments worldwide. WHO sets standards, pools knowledge, and helps share tools to fight the virus with countries around the world, rich or poor. One such mechanism, launched in April, is the COVID-19 Tools Accelerator. This is a landmark collaboration to accelerate the development, production, and equitable distribution of vaccines, diagnostics, and therapeutics for COVID-19. Information is one of the most valuable resources in times of pandemic. As the pandemic spreads, it has also given rise to a second pandemic of misinformation from harmful health advice to wild conspiracy theories. WHO provides science-based information on how to protect all the world's people from the virus. The UN family across the globe are helping to spread the word about measures that are proven to help, like physical distancing, hand washing and other hygiene measures. That includes reaching out to some 3.6 billion people around the world who have no access to the internet and have other worries besides COVID-19. In South Sudan, volunteers working with the UN peacekeeping mission have set out to change the minds of people who think COVID-19 is not about them. What we are saying is that we are all human and COVID-19 affects everybody. Information also helps prevent further harm. Headquartered at the UN in Vienna, the UN Office on Drugs and Crime, UNODC, has sounded the alarm bell on fake coronavirus medicine sold online and is helping to fight this type of international crime. UNODC is also helping countries prevent the spread of COVID-19 in prisons, giving advice and working with partners to send medical supplies where they need it. Another UN Vienna-based body, the International Narcotics Control Board, INCB, is helping governments safely expedite export and import of basic medicines like painkillers during COVID-19 so that hospitals and pharmacies continue to have enough supplies. COVID-19's effects on people who are already vulnerable is a big concern. The UN Refugee Agency, UNHCR, is helping in camps like this Rohingya refugee settlement in Bangladesh, where 600,000 people live in close quarters. We, for example, trained 1,200 community health workers to spread messages on uh, hygiene prevention, on what is COVID, what are signs and symptoms, how can you prevent it as a family, and how can social distancing contribute. As the world grapples with COVID-19, the UN has warned against losing sight of other serious health challenges. WHO has helped stamp out smallpox and beat back other contagious diseases like polio to just a few cases worldwide. But some old diseases, like measles, were again spreading even before COVID-19. Now the UN Children's Fund, UNICEF, has warned that disruptions in routine immunization due to the COVID-19 crisis could lead to disastrous new outbreaks. In Vienna, medical experts at the International Atomic Energy Agency, IAEA, are also working not only on COVID-19, Cancer remains one of the world's top killers and over two-thirds of the world's cancer deaths happen in poorer countries. The IEA helps countries use nuclear medical technology like radiation safely. Nuclear technologies can also help combat new infectious diseases like the mosquito-borne Zika. The World Health Organization says the world needs to do more to prevent future crises like COVID-19. We cannot continue to rush to fund panic, but let preparedness go by the wayside. The UN family is working hard to support countries through the COVID-19 crisis and to protect the health of all the world's people. 
If you want to help promote health and well-being, download the SDGs in Action app or check un.org for more ideas. Thank you for watching.